Hi, I'll be talking about how to leverage commutative operations to improve auto vectorization. So I'll focus in particular on straight line code vectorizers. Uh, uh, both LLVM and GCC implements the SLP vectorizer. And SLP and loop vectorizer complement each other. There are cases where the SLP can partially succeed and where the loop vectorizer fails to vectorize those codes. And, it, and it's common practice to run SLP after the loop vectorizer because of this reason. So why commutative operations matter? If you have commutativity, it means that you can re reorder the operands of binary operators. And by, by, by doing that, by reordering the operands, you change the shape of the DAGs. And because SLP works on these DAGs, ch changing the shape of these DAGs will affect how the SLP can, can effectively vectorize a piece of code. So v vanilla SLP can do some of these tricks to reorder operands, but it, it doesn't work with very complex uh, pieces of code. It doesn't, doesn't work well where you have uh, opcode mismatch further up the graph, or lo load address mismatch f f as well further up the graph, or even worse if you have to perform reordering across uh, several uh, op operations. And look at how SLP provides a solution for all these three cases. So here I'll be giving you an example. Uh, so let's say we have these two, two, uh, two, two, two DAGs. And th the way SLP works, I'll describe SLP first, vanilla SLP. It starts by grouping these two stores together into a, 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 a SLP node. And then it continues up the, this DAG. And here we have these add instructions. And now both operands are add instructions as well. So SLP will have no special uh, choice here, just continue the way it is. Then continue uh, vectorizing this, this branch. And now we have a problem, because now we have a opcode mismatch. And then th these nodes will not be grouped into a ve vectorizable node. And something similar will, hap will happen on the other operand as well. And then we continue on the other branch, where we can vectorize the ads. But again, we have opcode mismatches and opcode mismatches. So if we apply the cost model now, uh, the cost for in inserting these scalar uh, values into the, the vector uh, the vectors uh, is, w is worse than the benefits of vectorizing the code. So because the, the final cost is plus four, this code will not be vectorized at all. So our solution, what we propose is, at this point we see that we have uh, adjacent add instructions, uh, which is the same instruction of this current node. So we group them together into a, a multi-node. And, and build this multi node in the SLP graph as well. And now we'll perform the uh, operand reordering across all these add instructions because it's commutative and also associative. So we can do this kind of reordering. And at this point, we see that if we uh, reorder the end instruction to the, to the first uh, operand, we'll, we'll increase the number of matches. And then that's what we do. And something similar here with the multiplier. And we also look at, at the loads to see uh, how to increase the number of uh, the, the number of matches, looking at the load addresses as well. So now that we have performed this reordering of the operands, we continue uh, vectorization, building the SLP graph, and now we'll, we'll be able to match all these uh, operands as well. So if we apply the cost model, we'll see that will be able to fully vectorize this piece of code now. OK. Uh, and here we'll perform some experiments. Uh, we use the baseline 03 without any vectorization. And we compare with vanilla SLP, and we will see our performance. The green bar is our, our solution. And in, on average, it, it improves our vectorization compared to the other cases. So in, we basically introduced this multi node and the a look ahead strategy for doing vectorization. For further information, look at this paper published on CGO this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh